you doing Justin here and welcome to the D shape Explorer now the point of this lesson is to help you break out of standard chord grips and to lose the fear of changing things you got to remember when you're playing guitar if it sounds good it is good and if it sounds bad it is bad now when it comes to these chord Explorer ideas we're going to be taking it one shape at a time this lesson is going to be about the D shape and we're going to explore what happens when we lift off fingers change fingers uh, where we can add extra fingers where it sounds good where it doesn't to give you an idea of the process but I want you to try exploring it on your own as well when you're actually playing tunes for real when you find a D chord or a D minor chord try some stuff lift off some fingers add some fingers down just don't be afraid to experiment with what you're playing on guitar it doesn't have to be that rigid so long as you're listening and you go oh this sounds cool I might do this again or oh god that, that sounds a bit rough I just won't do it again in this circumstance because you will find too sometimes a particular idea will sound great in one song and it won't really work in another that's okay too that's music it's your taste it's what you like the sound of so Try and get into this idea as we go through the patterns, make notes about the things that you like the sounds of or ideas that you might it might spark because that's part of the point again is as well you watching this and going, oh, like that sounded really cool when he did that. How do you do that? Explore it, see how it works. So find the right environment for these ideas to work in. So do try and put it into practice. Like I said, this is not just a, a thinking exercise. This is, hey, here's the chord. Here's some ideas to try out. Do try and put these into some chord, uh, into some songs that you know that have got a D chord on it. Okay, ones that are centered around D chord are going to be the easiest, but of course it could be any song that's in the key of G. I don't know, and it occasionally hits that D chord. When it hits the D chord, try out some of these ideas. So let's get to it. We're going to start off by what happens when we lift off different fingers. So here's our regular D chord. <laughs> You should all be very familiar with that one by now. So what happens when we lift off our finger? So if we lift off our second finger, we actually end up with a D sus2 chord. Any of you that have done my beginner's course, you're probably familiar with that one. And adding little finger down, that's the D sus4. Little finger down on the third fret of the thinner string. Probably used to... That nice... It's really nice to practice that as a hammer on as well lifting it off and then hammering that one down really nice one to lift off then we can try lifting off the third finger now the key thing here is making sure you're actually getting that open B string because if it's muted you won't, you won't get any kind of difference in sound there so you want to make sure that the fingers are nicely on the tips there hip little sound that one it actually makes it a d6 it doesn't really matter what it's called but it's just a cool sound now last finger that we've got to lift off is the first finger it just on its own sounds a bit odd but it's lovely again to have us that hammer on Now, of course, you can lift off more than one finger at a time. So not it's not just one finger. You can try lifting more than that and see what works. So let's start with the extreme. Whoa. Okay, we've got ourselves a D6 sus2 sus4, I guess we could call that one. Why not? It's, you know, it's a little bit weird sounding, but it's something that might have a use. And quite often you'll find that you do play that anyway, especially if you've got a, an up strum on the and after four when you're changing chords. Like so it's likely that you use that anyway, actually, when you play in between chord changes, if you do an up strum there. So it obviously doesn't sound bad, but it's not something maybe you're not likely to use that all the time. However, some other cool ones that you can use, lifting our first finger and second finger at the same time, leaving that third finger down. I think that sounds real cool. a nice one you can try lifting these two or these two that 
last one sounds a little bit different to me, but every one of these variations is going to have a place. So you've got to try it out and see what's going to fit in what songs. Just try and get into this idea of being freer with it. Not Don't feel forced into having to do the same chords the same way all the time I, it was a real breakout for me i always thought that like you had to know the names of the chords you had to know the function of it you had to know all of this stuff the theory behind how it all works it doesn't matter it really doesn't if it sounds cool it is cool and especially if you want to get creative with the guitar playing you want to get into writing or whatever you've got to try and break out of those set chord boxes and just be free with it and just listen use your let your ears be the judge of whether things are good or not not your brain and your or your eyes you know it's an important part of the deal so we can lift off lots of different stuff that's all real cool what about adding stuff now we've only really got our little finger to add here and we already looked at adding it there the third fret for a d sus4 You can also add it here, it'll reach to here. It's a very cool sound. Some of you might be able to stretch the little finger up to there. Uh, I can't really, I'd have to re-finger it to get up there, but... Now, this particular chord would be called a D sus sharp four. Uh, and the sharp four is the kind of the key player in a thing called the Lydian mode, which may just sound like Greek to you because it is. Uh, but the idea here with the Lydian mode is it's a mode of the major scale, something that we cover way further down the line if you want to get into the technicalities. But that is the key sound of that particular mode. <laughs> So get the same same note here with the first finger moving a finger but we're not getting into moving fingers yet we're talking about adding fingers so we got sus4 we got sus sharp4 can't really reach the fifth fret uh, if you can try it it just leaves it as a d it makes it a d5 chord actually but uh little finger could also reach here what do you think this is going to sound like here fourth fret of the second string oh I'm not really feeling that would be a particularly practical chord. It's like... If you want something really tense, then... Maybe. But it only gets a maybe, and it would be unusual, to say the least, that one. Little finger down here. Really, really useful. So it's little finger, fourth fret of the third string. Really great for like playing a rock and roll. Some of you might have learned this before. Shuffle, that's the note there. Really, really good little note to be able to add in there. Trying to add it in there, I suppose, is... D with a sharpened fifth, if you can squeeze it in there. I'd be more likely to change the fingering around, to be honest there, rather than get my little finger reaching over there. But, you know, in theory, we could do that. You might find that in some, like, some ABBA songs or Led Zeppelin, that kind of thing, this sound. It's an interesting little one. It's, a, it's another option that you got. Lots of options here. I'm not saying any of these are right or wrong with it. You should try and just experiment. See what might work in what song. Little finger could also reach over here, actually. Onto the fourth fret of the uh, uh, fourth string. This makes it a D with an F sharp bass. You could also play that same chord there. It's kind of common in those sort of songs where you might... Kind of ideas where you might muck around with a little bit of a melody there within the chord shape. So far everything we've looked at has been based around a D major chord but all of these same things still work for the D minor chord so I would definitely encourage you to go through. In fact let's do it together anyway. So here's a D minor 
we can lift off the first finger, we get that same D sus2. Little finger goes down, we got the sus4. The kind of thing. If we do this, the uh, sus sharp4 is still actually the same chord. It wouldn't have mattered whether we did it from a minor chord or a major chord. It's still got the same sound. Uh, lifting off third finger, minor six chord. Be useful somewhere, I'm not sure where, but it would be. Uh, lifting off that, definitely. Really nice, actually, lifting that one off. Uh, all of that sort of stuff can still go on. Uh, that one's still going to suck. This is interesting, actually. I'm not sure I've ever played that. Nice. Another kind of a minor six thing. You don't want to hit that one. Ah, that's a crunchy chord. That would be a minor chord with a major third on the bass. So it's going to be a bit weird. But you could put it down here. This is kind of part of what I'm getting at here. For, like I've never played that before, this in in that kind of context, and I've suddenly gone, oh, that's kind of cool. Like I've got a rhythm. Those kind of sounds, because they're new, are really good and creative for me. like as a songwriter. I'm like, oh, there's a cool little riff. I can find something new. It's not really that outstandingly creative to do that, but it's new to me and it's new to my ear and to my uh, musical imagination so therefore it's kind of an inspiring idea to pursue as a, a riff or a song a starting point for a song a seed for a song if you've not tried many of this uh, experimenting with lifting and adding fingers to chords before you probably find a lot of it sounds very fresh and interesting to you and might inspire you to get into writing your own songs or writing your own arrangement of somebody else's song so this is a that was a really good example of how just these little manipulations can lead you to an interesting place that you might not have experimented with before on your own it goes further so this is what i've tried to do here is take you through here's the chord shape here's what happens if you lift off fingers if you add fingers for both the major and minor but you can also just like change notes you can try moving a finger backwards or forwards and uh exploring other chord groups you might explore the same stuff with a, a d7 chord or a d major seven. Oh, that's some crunchy stuff it, it doesn't matter the, the idea is to help you break free of the confinement of having very specific chord grips that you feel like you have to play all the time. Because I, it, a really big part of this whole guitar adventure is learning new sounds, exploring new sounds. And I, I don't want you to make the same mistake I made when I was learning guitar, which was feeling that every chord I ever played had to be a particular box that I learned in a book or somebody showed me or I heard it in a song or whatever. You can just experience experiment and explore and all of the guys that play the most interesting stuff are the people who do that that just go oh, i'm just going to move this here and see what happens and and sometimes it sounds terrible sometimes it sounds good sometimes it sounds incredible that's the stuff that you're looking for there is the stuff that really makes you excited when you play to try and find this new sound a new thing that you hadn't thought of doing before that's the point of this whole series uh if you're following along on my grade three course, you're going to find that we do these uh, shape explorer lessons every second week, but I will collate them together for somebody who wants to just learn each particular shape in order as well. But I think it's a good idea to have a bit of time here to explore each of the shapes. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really important that you try and put this stuff into practice. Don't leave it as a cerebral exercise where you're just, you know, mucking around. Try and find examples, make notes of things that you like the sound of. Maybe, you know, I've talked many times about how important I think it is to have your own chord book of chords that you discover on your own. So this is the perfect example, perfect way of mining for new fun chords that you might like to uh, make a note of. And then try and use them in a song. Pick a song that is already like on your campfire list, an easy song that you can play already. 
and just try out that you know that's using the d chord and just try some of this stuff in a context of a song and see where it takes you you might find that these spark off whole other ideas for other chord shapes as well and that's fine too there's no there's no rules here the big rule in music is that if it sounds good it is good and if it sounds bad it is bad right so if it sounds bad just don't do it again in that context try it don't be afraid of ever trying it again but just you know, try and remember some of the sounds that you think are really cool and use them. Try them out each time. Even in a live, improvised env environment, it's good to try some of these things. Because if you play it once, it sounds bad. You just go, oh, it's not working now. So you just leave it. No one's going to chastise you for having that one, you know, try it. Eventually, kind of longer term, the more you experiment with this sort of stuff, the more you start to know what the sounds of those things are and you'll find it in your musical imagination that you're playing the d chord and you're like oh this idea would sound cool and you know how to get that sound because you've played it a few times before so longer term it's less about like physical experimenting as it is about training your musical imagination that there are these other sounds what those other sounds sound like and how your fingers will find the way to make those sounds that's the longer term goal but that ain't some overnight stuff that's going to take years of practice to get that sound the relationship between the sounds in your musical imagination and your hand okay it's something i still work on i still hear things in my head that i can't find immediately on the guitar that's i think that's part of the journey and it's one of the things that maybe uh at least I understand. I've heard rumors that people like Jeff Beck can just, whatever they hear in their musical imagination, they can just play, make it happen on the guitar neck right away. I think that's that should be what we all aspire to. And this, again, is one of those tools that can really help with the development of that. You'll, you're going to find the more, the digger you, you dig into, the more you dig into this stuff, you're going to find that there are connections between musical imagination, ear training, transcribing, physical things, playing stuff on the guitar, your understanding of harmony, what the chords are. It's all interconnected. So this is just one of those vehicles I think is a really important one to, to both explore as a technical exercise, as part of your, like your knowledge practice, but then also putting it into practical examples in the real world in a song that you already know and seeing what, uh, what extra stuff this exercise can give you. More flavors, more food, more ideas uh, to make your playing a little bit more creative and interesting. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you happen to be over on YouTube, do head over to the website. You'll find loads of related material that you'll probably find really interesting. It will help you on this journey. Uh, if you are on YouTube, really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button and the slap and the bell if you want to get notified when I'm doing new lessons. If you're over on the website already, let me know in the comments how you're doing, what you're finding easy, what you're finding difficult. What's your favorite chord that you've discovered? Let me know in the comments there so we can check it all out and share amazing discoveries that we make. Uh, and do remember to check the text part of this lesson if you've got any questions. Uh, I do get in to try and answer the questions as often as I can. And when I do, I include the answers up in the lessons, uh, hoping that other people will find the answer there already. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like my Beatles allergy is flaring up again.